Jonathan, quite recently, you've been getting a little bit more bearish on your outlook of where the S&P will end the year. Talk to us about the here and the now, the daily volatility. Is it something you're trying to look through? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We. Um we lowered our number to 38.50, which was you know seven and a half percent upside between the end of September and today, and we got five percent bounce within three days. And it's just a set, you know it's all about this crazy volatility. But I think the story here is between now and the end of the year, we think we get a rally, mostly because the level of volatility is likely to come down a little bit, and that's probably going to push us higher. It doesn't mean that the overall picture has changed, but but it's usually when the volatility on the VIX is over 30. It's actually a great time to buy if you have the stomach. What drives lower volatility between now and year end? You know, if you were to look on your Bloomberg terminal and you were to look at, let's say, the VIX over 10 years or 20 years, what you would see is it has these episodic spikes to really high levels, and then it pretty quickly over, when I say quickly, six weeks to three months, it falls. It doesn't stay at elevated levels. Imagine, for example, somebody jumps behind you and your heart races. Your heart doesn't race forever. It like very quickly goes down. And that's exactly what the VIX says. The only time that, that any of us have experienced a VIX that stayed at high levels and, and really you know kind of lived there for a while was during the financial crisis. So we've done a whole bunch of, of back testing of this. When the VIX is over 30, it's a great buy signal. But that's the same time that everybody's running for the exit and everybody's afraid that they're gonna be on the wrong side. But what about the move index? What about some of the other volatility gauges that are cross asset? Does that give you pause, give you worry? Um, you know, I don't know if they give me pause. I mean, first of all, I mean, the, the move that we're seeing in, in fixed income mm. is the yields is just insane. I mean, the move we had, you know, listen, I got the call right, at least for the week, um, which is that the, the market popped, but it wasn't because volatility came down. It was because the tenure came down or, yeah. or yields came down by 25 basis points, which in all honesty, wasn't really my call. Uh, not that we won't take, we won't <laughs> take, take it. Just take it. Just, just, just take it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think that the one thing we have to get comfortable with, and this is why it's so hard to forecast now, is that there, that it's really hard to define anything which looks like a trend in an environment like this. What are your models telling you about stability within the bond market? 30 basis point moves in either day. Do you need that to subside to get some calmness as well within the equity markets? So there's really... There's really a couple things when we when we set out because uh, we set out a market forecast for you know the end of this year as well as for all of next year, and so we, we you know we break it down in, in the very simplest way: where are multiples likely gonna, likely going to be, and what's going to happen to the the earnings trend, and the earnings trend for next year, we really um, we really dampened our numbers down a lot for next year because we expect um, margins to come in a fair bit of, of uh, to, to come in a fair bit. Revenues will be, will be like 4%. Margins will be something like negative 4 And the only movement we have in EPS is just the buybacks, which is not a big deal. This year, what we're expecting is kind of a, a bounce off of this oversold condition. And once you get you know valuations up a little bit and vol down, we don't think there's a lot of follow through on that. So we think that you know this is kind of a one-time shot you're gonna get on some re-rating mm -hmm. over the next three months. And then beyond this, it's an earnings story and it's not a really inspiring earnings story. Mm 